Cheers. Hello, everyone. I'm Thor. Uh, thanks very much for having me. Hello. Um, let me share my screen. We tested that this works. So this is me. Um, all my sort of branding is around Thor Web Dev. So generally, if you search for Thor Web Dev or put it on Twitter or anywhere, can you see my screen? Yes, okay. very well. Brilliant. Um, yeah, actually, a little little nugget here. If you you know the the um, preview, uh, the GitHub profile readme thing, uh, I found out that you can actually write um, HTML and CSS within SVG. I don't know if people knew this, but you can like specify a foreign object within your SVG, and then you can actually write style. Um, and HTML. So like this whole animation is like a CSS animation written within an SVG. I thought that's pretty cool. Anyway, uh, yeah, so you can find me on GitHub, on Twitter as well. I'm trying to get to the point where I have more followers that, than people I'm following. So if you can help me make that happen, thank you. Uh, but today we want to talk about uh, Superbase. So Superbase is actually, um, a Singapore-based startup. Uh, it's backed by Y Combinator. It was part of uh, the summer batch, so they just completed the the demo day. And um, yeah, they've recently been, you know, basically launched on uh, kind of Hacker News. Uh, sort of unintentionally, someone launched them, and people have really enjoyed working with Superbase and and me as well. And um, it is kind of the open source Firebase alternative. So what that means is sort of based around Postgres, uh, which, you know, is an open source database uh, that has, you know, decades of, you know, um, proving itself. So it's a very, very beloved and tested and, and better test database. Uh, and then building on top of that, um, we can actually see that here. If we jump into uh, the repository, um, so this is kind of the sort of the super base stack, you can call it. Um, and this is sort of how the hosted platform for Superbase is currently set up. Um, so at its heart is the Postgres uh, database. Um, then uh, we're utilizing GoTrue uh, for authentication, uh, Postgres for uh, kind of automatically spinning up an API um, for your Postgres database. Uh, real-time is uh, sort of a real-time engine written in Elixir. Um, or is it real-time? Yeah, so an Elixir server um, that kind of listens to the, the, the Postgres changes uh, and then with the JavaScript client uh, facilitates kind of the real-time listening via WebSockets. Uh, and then PG API is uh, kind of a, a RESTful API for managing Postgres. And so... It really is, you know, a stack of open source. Uh, there's then Kong, uh, which kind of is, I guess, the sort of the traffic API uh, platform. But so the cool thing is we have a couple examples here. And so one example is the uh, Slack clone, uh, which is pretty neat. And what I'm just going to do kind of in the next couple of minutes is sort of, you know, set up our own Slack clone. And if you want to, you can, uh, you can follow along or, you know, if you have two screens, <laughs> you're welcome to do that. Uh, otherwise, uh, I think there will be a recording as well. So if you go to the alpha sign up, it's uh, just app.superbase.io. Uh, you can sign up with your GitHub account. I'm already signed in here. Uh, and I've created a project called uh, Talk.js. And what you get is, you know, just kind of a, uh, a Postgres database that's set up for you. And um, you can see that at the moment, there are no tables yet. So we kind of need to create our table uh, schema. And so uh, we actually have a couple of quick starts here um, where there's the Slack loan quick start. Uh, and this is just, you know, Postgres SQL um, so uh, you can interact kind of with SQL with your Postgres database here. Uh, and so what we're doing is um, we kind of have an enum here, uh, online offline status of the user. Uh, we have a table for our users. 
Um, we have a table with the channel, so that's kind of the Slack, uh, Slack channels, and then a table with uh, the messages, and sort of we defining uh, the relationships here, uh, where the references. So if you if you're familiar with SQL, uh, you'll likely know what's going on. And then what's pretty cool here is that you can use a Postgres role level security policies to secure your data um, and use that with the authentication piece. And so this makes sure that, you know, only if the user is locked in, uh, so we have kind of this uh, allow locked in read access policy. Um, so only locked in users are actually able to see uh, the messages, the Slack channels. And you can think of this, you know, similar to like the Firebase security rules. Um, it's just kind of powered natively by uh, the Postgres uh, security policies. Um, and then we're uh, just inserting some dummy data here. So let's actually run this um, to kind of seed our Slack clone. So that was now successful. Uh, and also what happens in the background is that we now have our database tables um, set up here and we can actually go to uh, the auto-generated documentation. So we can see that here we have, um, oh, wait, wait, wait. Ooh, sorry, I think uh, we've got some noise here, but um, so we have, uh, so Postgres auto-generates kind of this uh, Swagger schema and then from the Swagger schema, uh, we can generate, auto-generate kind of the, the documentation here. So we can see we have um, the tables, we have our channels, uh, our messages, our users, uh, and we can then here see kind of the read. So that's um, that's how we read. We basically say, okay, um, from the super, you know using the Superbase client uh, from the user table, select star. So if you're familiar to, with with kind of SQL, it sort of translates fairly easily, um, and you can use kind of the the filters here, um, you know, similar to how you use them with uh, Postgres. So now that we have this spun up, uh, we actually have, so if we wanted to, we could, um, no, I think it's in the API. So we could actually directly um, uh, connect with our uh, SQL, uh, with our Postgres database if we wanted to do that. But you know, generally what we do is we'd use um, the API here, so we have, uh, an anonymous key, so that's kind of our public key that we can use on the client. And then we have the service role, which is sort of our secret key. So the service role can actually access all the data by um, sort of uh, going beyond the, the policy. So not overriding the policies, but you know, not, uh, so it's able to read the data without um, sort of authentication login. So this is sort of your, your secret key uh, and so the service role you'd only use on uh, the server side in a secure environment, but then the an anon key, kind of the public anonymous key, uh, we can use on the client side. And then that is uh, powered by the security rules. And so what we can do now is just um, set up our, you know, basically static front end. So this is uh, just written, written in kind of Next.js. And so we can actually run it on uh, code sandbox. Uh, if you're familiar with code sandbox, it's it's a tool I really enjoy for kind of prototyping or you know sharing examples with uh, the community. Um, I think it also supports Svelte uh, and kind of all the the different frameworks. Actually, uh, the code sandbox guys they've uh, they've bought a couple domains. So like if you type React.new, uh, it actually opens a new uh, React sandbox, um, which is pretty cool. So you can do some nice uh, prototyping, but what you can do as well is you can um, basically import kind of any uh, project from GitHub into Code Sandbox. So that's what we're doing here. Uh, the source, you know, is on, on GitHub um, in you know this examples here, Slack clone, uh, and so as changes are being made to uh, the Slack clone, they will be reflected in the Code Sandbox as well. So. That, um, that is really cool. And what we can do now is we can just fork, uh, fork this example. So now we have our own fork here and you can see that we have some 
uh, unset secrets. So we want to open the server tab uh, and we can see that we need um, our uh, public superbase key and our superbase URL. So here, let's get our superbase URL copied over. That is here. Let's add the secret and then uh, here we need the, so it's a next public. Uh, if you're familiar with Next.js, then next, uh, next underscore public is the prefix, prefix um, that sort of makes the, the environment variable available on the client side. So we add that secret uh, as well. And then our sandbox is uh, restarting. So let's see if this works now. And let me copy this and uh, try to find the chat window. Where are you? Chat, chat, chat. More chat. Mm. Okay, fingers crossed that we're, how are we doing? Are we compiling? Okay, let's see. And so what we can do now is we can uh, sign up. So I'm just Thor at test dot, uh, and you know, it would be awesome if you grab this from the chat and um, sign yourselves up as well. So just put in your email password, hit sign up. And let's not save that. Uh, and let's create a new channel maybe. Let's just say talk.js. And so if you're in there in the new channel, let's uh, maybe do a wave. Okay, anyone here? So what do you should, yeah, nice. Um, see that this is all happening in uh, real time. So you could now open this across uh, different browsers. Uh, actually, you know, Let's do that. I mean, I guess you all get the point that it's, uh, that it's happening in real time. So I'm now here in a new browser session, so I'm, I'm, I'm not locked in. Let's do um, a new tester. Uh, sign up. And so now, if I do yo, hello. Yeah, so I guess you, you get the idea. Um, so that is then happening via uh, the, the real time sort of API. So if you're, if you're interested, um, so for example, you can see here uh, kind of the login, sign up, it just takes a username and a password. Um, like from sort of a developer uh, experience point of view, it is actually, you know, really sort of neat, and um, we yeah we're kind of working on different versions as well. I've made some kind of open source contributions um, for like TypeScript type definitions, uh, which was really fun. And you can actually uh, generate um, your types from the database with Swagger. So you know the same way that um, kind of your uh, API documentation is, is generated. Uh, you can do um, the same and kind of pull down the types into like type definition so you can use them uh, in your TypeScript project. Uh, you can also here is kind of sort of similar to uh, kind of an Airtable sort of experience. You can um, select your different um, databases uh, and you could kind of add um, new databases or new uh, sort of columns and rows as well uh, if you wanted to. And then also you can have, you have the authentication. Oh, maybe, sorry, I shouldn't show everyone's email addresses. I do apologize. Um, but yeah, you can, so you can look at kind of all the users that were uh, created there. Cool, yeah, that was kind of the quick, um, quick demo. Uh, another cool thing, so if you 
Dum, dum, dum. Yeah, if you want to, um, you know, kind of help help the guys out, maybe give them a star. Uh, that'd be pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, most of the team is uh, is here in Singapore. Um, if you'd love to get involved, uh, you know, feel free to uh, like let me know on Twitter or um, you know just kind of jump into the GitHub here. Uh, we actually have um, for Hacktoberfest we've created. Uh, a little project board here, um, and we kind of created some some issues and sort of task uh, ideas. Um, if you're not familiar with Hacktoberfest, it's uh, you know kind of throughout the month month of October. Uh, if you contribute to open source projects that have sort of the Hacktoberfest label, and I think you have to um, you know contribute to like four issues with the Hacktoberfest label, then you can get. Uh, a free Hacktoberfest t-shirt, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, so we actually, we have a blog post kind of explaining, uh, explaining all of that. Um, so yeah, that's sort of a little bit my um, open source uh, community contributions here. And yeah, we actually have some events as well. So if you're around for that, so this is actually uh, on Friday, so it's it's Singapore friendly time, which is another cool thing. With you know uh, the team being based in Singapore, it's really nice. Um, so there's a GitHub Open Source Friday live stream, and then we have our Superbase Hacktoberfest uh, online meetup, which we're running on uh, YouTube on Friday. I believe that is next week. Uh, also Singapore time, you know, grab a coffee, come join us, and you know we'd we'd love. Um, for you to contribute if you if you want to. And I think that is all from me at this point. Sorry, it was at the end a lot of uh, different plugs. So maybe we can go over to Q&A. Awesome. Uh, so does anyone have any questions? I, I can start. Uh, pretty, pretty cool, Thor. I've uh, been, been playing with Firebase and a few limitations, right? Like the fire stores so of being able to do the SQL, that sounds promising. So I, I had a question, I'm just uh, curious, maybe out of ignorance, which is why, why like uh, Postgres, as in, I, I was thinking if, if I were to think out of the blue, like I was thinking you have like a pop sub and, and, and I don't know how you keep it in memory so that it's real time so that it goes into, to disk. Do you have insights on, on the architecture? Um, that's a good question. No, so I, I definitely came in when these choices were already made. Uh, I think sort of the original motivation was that, um, you know, Postgres is kind of, if you look to sort of the enterprise world, it's actually a very, you know, scalable, um, very like true and tested database that, you know, has decades of sort of development behind it. Uh, and there is a big fan base for Postgres as well. And so I think for the fa founders, it was just, um, they've used Postgres in previous projects, but sort of wanted to bring kind of the Firebase experience um, to Postgres to, you know, give you a sort of an easy start, but then also kind of the, the, the peace of mind that, you know, it is powered by sort of this very scalable database that you, you know, could potentially eject at any point and sort of take anywhere else or, you know, kind of build kind of other projects on top. And um, I think it was also kind of the open source ecosystem that already existed around Postgres. Um, and sort of really the idea is kind of using open source and building, building on top of that. But yeah, it's a good question whether, um, I mean, there are certain projects, you know, like, um, I don't know if you heard of Prisma, uh, Prisma.io, which is um, kind of a similar, not a similar idea, it's more sort of the, um, you know, trying to replace the, the ORM layer, basically sort of giving um, type safety and like um, kind of database agnostic sort of generating uh, clients and, and, and stuff. Uh, so that's sort of more, uh, Prisma is more focused on, you know, kind of the type safety and sort of more the ORM side of things, whereas uh, I think Su Superbase is more kind of focused on, um, at least at the moment, sort of 
embracing the Postgres uh, ecosystem and sort of bringing kind of the, the client sites, almost the Jamstack, um, you know, front end developers, giving them sort of a, a robust back end tooling without necessarily needing kind of the, the back end knowledge. Makes sense. Just, just sorry, I have to go, but I'm, so I'm going to jump the queue and maybe ask the last question. It's going to be a quick one. Just, do you know if they have like a Python SDK or you have to just go to REST and sockets? No, so there is uh, actually the community is currently building a good amount of Python stuff. So if you go to the um, Superbase, uh, Superbase org on GitHub, um, there is actually Superbase Python client um, being built. Yeah. Thanks so much. Cool. Yeah, no worries. Any uh, other questions? If anyone has any other questions, uh, please unmute your mic. I think there also will uh, eventually be swag. So that should be, Ooh. should be pretty cool if you, you know, contribute for swag. Maybe you know this from the Gatsby where the Gatsby swag store, you can actually uh, log in with your GitHub and then it sees if you have made contributions to Gatsby and you can get uh, like free swag. Uh, so that would be cool to build. How, how do you get involved with Superbase? How do you get involved? Um, yeah, I think you just uh, go, you just no, go. I, I, I mean you. Oh, me personally? Yes. Oh, right. Yeah. So uh, a colleague of mine is a former colleague of one of the founders. Um, so we actually met kind of earlier this year uh, when uh, the Stripe office was still open. Um, they were in for lunch and we just kind of met. And yeah, since, since they added kind of the auth uh, feature, it's, it's been really, you know, I, I, I sort of really got excited about it. And also yeah. that the team is based in Singapore and, um, mm -hmm you know, contributing to open source. It, it really caught, kind of helped me uh, a little bit through the whole COVID stuff, you know, sort of mm -hmm. having more local folks and, you know, it's exciting to have um, local startups. Yeah, definitely. So cool. uh, we got a couple uh, of questions in the questions. chat. What is the pricing model? So uh, at the moment uh, it is completely free. Um, but yeah, I guess eventually there will be uh, a pricing model. <laughs> uh, that <laughs> I guess that is generally the problem with startups. You know, you need to need to figure out um, pricing. Um, so yeah, no pricing model yet. I believe you know for the hosted solution, it will be some sort of SaaS. You know, either kind of monthly or um, sort of resource based billing. Um, and you know for yeah, kind of other pricing models. It's a, it's a good question, you know. Uh, feel free to get involved and make recommendations for pricing if you if you have thoughts. Um, and is there PHP support? Um, it's a good question. There is there has been a lot of uh, requests. So there's actually a, an issue. I believe it's issue number five. Uh, it's frightening that I know that, but it's like Mambo number five. So um, issue number five. And um, there you can vote for um, for your favorite client. So Dart is actually pretty, pretty high in the running. I think Python as well, uh, Ruby. Um, yeah, Dart for Flutter, right? Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, it was the PHP. I thought someone was working on, uh, maybe I'm lying. Let's see, PHP. Okay, no, it doesn't, doesn't look like uh, anyone has. So yeah, if you're familiar with uh, PHP, maybe that's um, 
Something you might want to... Oh, PHP is there. Oh, okay. Do you have a link? Where did you find PHP? That's cool. Okay, so it looks like PHP is there. Uh, there's a question from Paul. What's... Oh, yeah, yeah. PHP is in the discussion uh, as a request. It's just not yet... Um, It's not yet there as an actual client library. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, what skills are usually needed to contribute? Categories of issues. Yeah, um, it's a good question. We sort of try to, if you go to the project board, maybe I can share my screen again. Um, so there's kind of, there's a couple projects. There's like the open source community. Um, okay, there's not too many of those, but then uh, for the Hacktoberfest, um, so there's a variety of different kind of categories. And um, yeah, I think we need to figure out the smaller, it doesn't look like we've got smaller engineering tasks. But so, yeah, there, there are certain ways, um, you know, kind of like a migration sort of script for like Firestore or, um, you know, if you work with Redwood JS or Blitz.js sort of um, examples are like a nice way to contribute because it's uh, something where you, you aren't necessarily reliant on other uh, folks, you know, if, if, if you don't kind of want to join an existing ongoing um, Thing. Then also we have like a couple uh, design tasks. I think we actually have, maybe we have a notion page somewhere. We, we still need to fill, fill in the board. Um, but yeah, I think you can also jump. We now have, uh, it is in beta, I believe, uh, GitHub discussions. Uh, and so you could jump in there and you could uh, open a new discussion, kind of ask a question, um, and such. Yeah, is it, does that answer the question? What what skills are usually needed to contribute? Yeah, I, I mean, I think there should be something kind of for for different skill levels. Um, but yeah, I think kind of at the moment, sort of the the JavaScript side of things is kind of the, the, the largest. And I think, uh, for example, writing, uh, writing an example um, would be a nice, nice way to start contributing. Uh, cool. Any other questions? Hey, if you have any other questions, uh, please raise it now. Another question came in. Uh, do you plan to support NoSQL? That is, that is a good question that probably should go on, um, you know, uh, open that in the discussions. That, that would be super cool. Uh, I don't believe, I mean, so uh, Postgres has fairly like nice support for, for JSON blobs, so to speak. So you can sort of work NoSQL within SQL, if that makes sense. Um, but in terms of like a real uh, sort of NoSQL database, uh, I think it's not planned at the moment. But if you want to open a discussion around it, um, do you, do you have a specific database in mind? Like, do you mean NoSQL database per se or um, more kind of, you know, NoSQL sort of translator so you don't have to write in SQL, so to speak? Okay, NoSQL database, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think it's, it's planned at the moment. Uh, but yeah, if uh, I'd love for you to open open a discussion and then we can uh, get the team involved and see. Cool. Uh, 
Cool. Any other questions? Uh, if you're inter uh, interested in contributing, you can also contact Thor on Twitter. Yeah. It's also Thor, Thor Web Dev, right? Yeah, correct. It's kind of Thor Web Dev throughout Lation. Uh, For everything. <laughs> yeah. What's Web Dev in Mandarin? I don't, I don't know. know. I need to go and check. Okay. Oh, uh, oh so thanks. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, so if anyone has any other questions, uh, you can contact them on Li Hao Tan on Twitter and also Thor RepDev on Twitter. Uh, thanks for joining in today. Uh, next month will still be happening um, as well as November. Uh, and then for December, we're taking a break uh, for TalkJS. Uh, so if you would like to give a talk, please feel free to submit it on the GitHub issues that I've showed earlier. Uh, it's github.com slash singaporejs uh, slash talk.js. Um, so just go in, pop in to the issue of the month that you would like to speak at, and uh, we will see you there. Okay, uh, thanks a lot for the talks today. And thanks for all the questions, everyone. It was awesome. Uh, if anyone else